Hello YouTube, my name is Dong Chen. This is my first video and today I want to talk about my Huawei Mate 10 Pro. The model I have here is the BLA L29 version C636 variant. That is the Hong Kong International model. So let's get started. Let's walk around the phone. So the phone on the right side you will have your power button right here. It's, it's not the clickiest. It's kind of small to be honest with you. Um, but the case that they did give you in the box, it works well with this power button. I did buy a case on Amazon, which was a thicker case. Um, and it seemed like the power button was mushy. But as far as the volume up and down buttons, it worked great in both cases. So, let you hear this. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but the buttons are clicky on this device. On the top here, we have the uh, what is that? speaker and IR blaster and two antenna lines. On the left side here, we have the SIM card slot. And the bottom, we have the speaker here and the microphone ports here. And it uses a USB-C. This features Huawei's Supercharge. Now, it does charge super fast. I don't know if anybody used a um, OnePlus or OnePlus 5T. It's similar to the Dash Charger, but probably not as fast but it's still super fast okay so on the screen here and you can see it's a pretty good size you got AMOLED 6 inch display 1080 by 2160 PPI and an 18 by 9 ratio so I've had this going on about 40 days I purchased this in Hong Kong while I was on vacation and it's held up pretty nicely, minus the uh, fingerprint smudges, which you're going to get on an all glass back, all glass back and front, pretty much. So let's talk about the battery life. This has a 4,000 milliamp battery, and I'll show you, show you guys what my battery life's been. I am currently at 50%. And I have about 8 hours and 6 minutes left. I unplugged this device, I believe, at 2.30 in the morning. Let's see. Yep. I unplugged it at 1.28 a.m. And I've been using this for 14 hours and 52 minutes. I don't like keeping my phone on the charger after it's been charged for, you know, super long. I like unplugging them when they're charged and just let it sit there and just let it you know be on standby so for you guys who want a big battery and want a battery that lasts all day I would say this has been pretty good on battery life now what is super aggressive on this phone is the background apps it will kill all your background apps when you're not using them sometimes it's a good thing sometimes it's a bad thing as far as um, you know apps that you use um, the bad thing is when you have an app that you just killed sometimes it won't notify you because you killed the app already so that is a bad thing um, other than that battery has been decent here is my setup on this device right here how I have my widget my weather widgets and there's all the apps that I use Okay, let's talk about this. This is a IP67 dust and water resistant device. It is a single or dual SIM variant, and the one I have is a dual SIM. It is... So on dual 4G standby, when you have your SIM card on 1 and 2, and if you make your prioritized... 4G SIM on one and you get a phone call on 
Sim 2, more than likely you will not be getting online as this does not have 4G uh, voice over LTE or voice over Wi-Fi. It only shows 3G but more than likely you're not getting online unless you're on Wi-Fi. So keep that in mind if you're using this with dual SIM. As far as the first SIM goes, it'll have H+, which is basically 3.5G, but not quite 4G. So, that is a that is a down that is a downsize for me for having H+, instead of 4G LTE. But, what can you do? As this is the international model. Uh, what else? Oh yeah. So as you can see here, it does have that slide, that finger slide gesture for the notifications. That is one cool thing. Um, it has shortcuts. So right now I have shortcuts. Let me see if I can show you on camera, which is a C. What else? Uh, come on. Come on. W, which turns on a flashlight. M, which turns on YouTube. And uh, O, which does nothing. Uh, I believe that's all. So you do got some knuckle gesture shortcuts there. So the people who do like gestures you have a few not a whole lot you can't really customize them but it is what it is uh, one thing that's pretty cool is you could do split screen on let's see uh, kind of, it is kind of finicky uh, let's see uh, come on there you go there's your shoe. split screen it's, it's kind of finicky but it works uh, you got double tap to take a screenshot. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else? Here's here's my home screen in case y'all want to see it again. And EMUI, if y'all have never used before, that is the original launcher that comes with it. Nothing special. Um, you can search the app or go by letters. Now, you can change your navigation bar. That's just the way I had it. And you can do that as well. One thing that I don't like about this device is when you put your phone in your pocket and you take it out, sometimes I'll have it on Do Not Disturb. Sometimes it'll come out of my pocket it'll be in airplane mode it'll have the navigation dock you know some of the stuff that I didn't set when I take it out of my pocket I don't know if it's me doing it which I don't see how I can I just took it out of my pocket uh, what else and right here when you lift it up on your lock screen it does have these shortcuts now what I do like about this device is it does have always on display. Now if you have never used a phone with always on display, you don't know. But if you have used a phone with always on display, such as the V30, the Pixel 2, the Pixel 2 XL, the Note 8, uh, the S8, S8 Plus, this is a go. Always on display. But the only bad thing about this always on display, it only shows you the time, the date, the battery, and if you have messages. That is about all. You're not going to get any uh, Facebook notifications or whatnot. It's usually just the stock apps. Oh, what else? Oh, I want to talk about this device. Now the variant I do have, the C636, does not have the Google Cards. You could download the Google Cards with a Google Pixel 2 uh, launcher APK, but out of the box it does not. So I set it as my 
calendar widget. The one I have actually has what they call high board, whatever the heck that is. But anyways, if you're used to a Google 2, Google Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL, you will know what I'm talking about, about the Google Quartz. So, Model C636 does not have the Google cards on the left. I believe the European version does have it. So, I do want to, you know, let you guys know, because I didn't know. I didn't know that my model didn't have it, and the European version had it. I don't see why they can't just make a model for everything. You know, make a software for all models. You know, it will just sound, you know, just be more reasonable to make a software for all models instead of having, you know, one model don't have this, the next model don't have this, but whatever. Anyways, that's my rant. But as far as everyday usage, this has been a great phone. The battery life has been good for me. Um, I do like phones that have dual SIMs. This is actually the first one that I've used that I actually put both my SIMs in this phone. Before I used to carry two phones, which is a hassle because I'll be, you know, leave one phone on my desk and then I walk away and then I'm not getting calls because I left it on my desk. But I do have a OnePlus 5T on order. It will be here tomorrow and we'll see how that goes. I bought the OnePlus 5 when it first came out but didn't really like it. I don't know, I guess it was just too plain. But I want to try out the face ID, the face recognition, and I want to try out the fingerprint scanner. But, anyways. Okay, so for people who don't know about this device, it is powered by a Kirin 970 chipset running Android 8.0 out of the box and on top of EMUI 8.0. Um, it has 128 gig internal storage with 6 gigs of RAM. Everyday use, I haven't seen it lag yet. It powers on fast, it takes pictures fast, it's just a fast working device. It doesn't lag, I have not seen any lag, any stutter yet on this device. The picture quality on this device has been okay, but it's not Pixel 2 notch yet. It's not Pixel 2 territory or iPhone X territory. It's just a between, I don't know, the Note 8 and the uh, OnePlus 5T. It, it, it's about the same, it's just the Note 8 is more saturated, in my opinion. Now, you may have different opinions, so that's just my opinion. The camera setup is a dual 12 and 20 megapixel f1.6 with optical image stabilization on the rear. The front has an 8 megapixel camera on the front, which is right here. So... This device is coming to the U.S. on February the 18th. It is currently on pre-order. It is currently GSM unlocked only. So you guys on Verizon and Sprint, it will not work. This is available in Mocha Brown on the international models. It is available in uh, Midnight Blue, Titanium Gray, and the High Dollar Porsche model which is twelve hundred and twenty five dollars that is very very high in my honest opinion but if you have my if you have money to blow go for it anyways this has been my review on the Huawei Mate 10 Pro um, please give this a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down to tell me what I can improve on and please subscribe to my channel if you want me to make more videos. Anyways, this is Dong Chen, and peace out.